Hi, so if you are watching this, that means that you missed our class meetings. I'm going to try to cover the same information that we um, worked on today as a group. Uh, we start off today with an estimation mystery. I'd like you to take a look at this jar and see if you can make an estimate of the number of foam pieces in the vase. As the clues appear, use this information to narrow down your guess or estimate to um, a, re a more reasonable answer, but you'll get closer and closer. Feel free to use a calculator on this. Clue one, the number is less than 125. <clears throat> Clue two, add the numbers that can be seen on the die. See this little die over here? The answer is a multiple of that number. The answer is not a multiple of three. The answer is an even number. And the answer is not a multiple of eight. So with this information, you should be able to fine tune your answer and be ready for the reveal. There were 70 objects in this jar. So I'm going to move us over to do a quick um, review of some information that could help you complete the work for this week. Right now we are working on solving equations and we use inverse operations to do that. So when I see addition, I do subtraction. And when I see subtraction, I do addition. So I'm going to do a sample problem here that uses those two. So if I have x plus 8 equals 19, to find out what x is, I see addition here, so I'm going to do subtraction. I'm only going to subtract the 8 because I'm trying to get that x by itself. And I'm not going to subtract the 8 from the x because they're not like terms. So when I'm dealing with addition and subtraction, I'm dealing with like terms. 19 minus 8 is 11, so my x is equal to 11. To check that, I'm going to go back and say 11 plus 8 equals 19 because I put this 11 where the x was and I'm showing that those numbers are equal to each other. Now when I see multiplication, I do division. And when I do div see division, I do multiplication. Again, these are opposites of each other. So an example for that, and this is where I think people start getting confused. If I have one third times X is equal to 12. I'm seeing this one third multiplied times the X and I wanna get the X by itself. But really when I'm getting the X by itself, I'm gonna have an invisible one in front of it. How do I get this to be an invisible one? I multiply it by the opposite of itself, or it's reciprocal. The opposite of one third is three over one. Three times one is three. One times three is three. So that gives me three over three X is equal to 36. But this, we don't show it. We just let, make it disappear. It's an invisible one. So we would just write this as X is equal to 36. Okay, so that was the majority of the work that we covered in our class meeting today. 
And I want to let you guys know about an opportunity to get extra credit added to uh, whatever your lowest score was for third quarter. Uh, UCLA, University of California in Los Angeles, has asked my students to do a seventh grade math problem tomorrow, and it's only for tomorrow. And you will log in and you'll tell them the time that you start the problem. You can use a calculator on the problem. And there will be a calculator in the online tool, but you can also use a calculator that you have or the calculator on your phone. And then you'll do an end time as well. I will post the link for that and you'll have just tomorrow to work on it. When you finish, you're going to answer a one question survey for me so that I know that you did it. And that way I can give you the extra credit points. It is completely optional, but I really hope you take advantage of this opportunity to help the researchers at UCLA know how to write better math problems for seventh grade students. So with that, uh, let me know if you have questions and I hope to see you in our meeting next week.